Yes guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video in a big couple of weeks for Newcastle United. Three games left to go, a fantastic win against Burnley at the weekend. 4-1 win, started off it was a little bit slow as we sometimes do of late, but as soon as we got into that game, it took over. Uh, Bruno, Isaac, Gordon, the fullbacks, Livermento, Holt, Longstaff, some great performances on that pitch, a big three points. Brighton at home at St. James's Park this weekend. This Saturday, if you're not subscribed, be sure to do so. I'll be there. I'll have all the usual pre-match chat, uh, match day vlog, instant reactions. Hopefully, I'll be cheering on Saturday as well. And then hopefully after the Manchester United game and Brentford away, I'll be cheering some European football. Outside a chance of fifth place, anyone? Uh, we will see what happens, but... Um, the season's not even over yet, and have Newcastle already agreed their first transfer? If you believe the reports as of last night and this morning, um, it's understood that Newcastle have reached a verbal agreement with the uh, Lloyd Kelly. Now, this is a person that has been cropping up over the last few weeks. Newcastle um, heavily linked with them. Obviously, you've got the... Um, the fact that he's out of contract at the end of this season. Quite a few clubs are being linked, but according to Fabrizio Romano, as well as a few of the sources, Newcastle have agreed verbally that we will be the club that he joins this summer window, which is, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll take him in a heartbeat. Um, six foot three, just 25 years old, centre-back, but can play left-back. We do love our centre-backs who will play at left-back as well, but I think importantly for us, we want to go out this summer and we want to spend some money. You know, everyone's talking about Elise, you know, the uh, Crystal Palace player who's absolutely ripping it up. £60 million um, release clauses being linked to Newcastle, Manchester United, a few of the teams. We want to hopefully go out and spend some money this summer. The trouble with us is, and we've seen it all season, injury troubles, not a deep enough squad, and, and yes, I don't know how much money we will have, but let's just go ahead and say it's um, 100 million, 150 million. How many players does that buy in this day and age? I say that like I'm a really, I'm really old, I am old. <laughs> but three, three 50 million pound players, two, two 60 million pound players. We need more squad, we need more depth. And when there's an opportunity like this to bring in, you know, a Premier League experienced centre-back who is versatile, can play left-back, has the height. I think he's fairly pacey for his height as well. On a free transfer, fair enough. It'll still have to go into the wages. It'll still have to go into the, the signing-on fee. But that takes us in a, a good step in a good direction, especially in a position where we need help. He will come in and immediately... Add to the probably the first team lineup. Now, look, everyone loves Sven Botman. We brought him in, he's been a fantastic player. He's out for nine months. And whether you like Jamal the Sells or not, he's also out for the next nine months. So, we need to bring players who can fill that position. If we could bring in a Lloyd Kelly on a free straight away, it's not only filling a position that we desperately need help in, but it's doing it without even touching that well. The word is war chest, isn't it? I'll be interested to see what kind of chest we do get. Um, will it mean having to sell one or two players to increase that? Will it be another maxi scenario where if we do sell an Almiron for 20, 30, 40 million, that can actually become 100, 150 million to spend? In the words of Darren Eels, it's kind of that player trading because if you sell a player now... You know, Callum Wilson's a player who's been linked away. Eddie Howe said that he doesn't want to let him go. I think regardless, we still need another striker. Lloyd Kelly, if the reports are true and he does sign us, and that's the thing we're being quick about it as well, because this is a summer with the Euros. Uh, and typically in a summer window where there is a tournament or something else going on, things are slowed down dramatically because... Players are away, they're here, they're there, they're all over the place. It's hard to nail players down and get these kind of deals done. If we're at this stage before the season's end, even ended, before the transfer window is even technically opened, and we're already off the mark with you know a verbal agreement, ready to go, it's, it's spot on for us. And for the sake of Eddie Howe as well, trying to give players, fair enough, it will, it will be a slightly different type of pre-season because we will have players away at various competitions, but... 
to be able to give him that little bit of time with the squad would be massive. And as I've mentioned already, it's cover for Botman. It's the alternative to Burn. It's the free. You know, there's question marks on what's going to happen with, with current players. You know, Dummett's contract's coming to an end. Richie's contract's coming to an end. What's happened with Matty Target? So it's it's one of it's one of bring player. We don't want to be in a situation f for me that we go and do spend sixty million on him, seventy million on him, and yes, that's great. But then we will get to the start of the season, and no offense to some of these players, because the likes of Dummett have put in a hard shift. Richie still gets songs sang about him every week, but then they've not played enough football. And I think it is the time where we are starting to slowly move some of these players out. But like we saw last season, we didn't do it. Because we had nobody else to bring in, you know, we still need those squad. We still need to fill the squad. There's no point in going right, um, Dumas, um, Richie, whoever else. You know, we've actually we've, we've finished. If we've done nothing else about it, I think the likes of a Kelly on a free straight away because he's an, an immediate replacement for Botman. And then when Botman comes back, he's he's filling the squad up nicely. And I mean, the, the things you can say, however, are he's injury prone. He has been in and out of that Bournemouth side and he has picked up a, a fair few injuries in his time. And do we need another injury pr prone player in our squad? Not really. But the hope is, is that a lot of the injuries I feel like we've had that have come along this season is overplaying players and not having the right depth in certain positions. Hopefully he can come in and if we're not paying any money for him and we're clever with the wages and we're clever with the signing on fee and even clever with what kind of deal we offer in terms of if he does get injured, what do we do next? This can be a really smart move. Um, the other centre-back that we are being heavily linked with is Tossin, the Fulham centre-back, 26 years old. Again, linked with him as of, as of I think was it three weeks ago, the Telegraph has said we were in for both of them. But I tell you what, both of them, both available on a free... Both will immediately, um, you know, challenge in for that centre back position. Um, Dan Byrne has been great, but he is getting older. I mean, Shaw is, I think, Shaw 30, 32 now. So the pair of them, our two starting centre backs, are th 32 years old. You know, we're bringing in a 25 year old, a 26 year old, two players who will be immediately competing. And if the time comes when Botman comes back, or even the time comes maybe in next summer window, where we go out and go see, you know, Shaw, who has been fantastic and I think has signed a new deal. If we do decide to upgrade for the down the line, we've still got some good players who can play those squad positions and they're both free. Which always sounds good to me. Uh, and I've mentioned £60 million release clauses. The other one, as of yesterday, is Elise, as I mentioned. The Crystal Palace player who's ripping it up, tore Manchester United for, to shreds. It's been said that his he has a £60 million release clause. Um, having said that, you look at the likes of him, you look at the likes of Eze, have seemed pretty um, loyal to that Crystal Palace and you're know, signing new deals wanting to be there it'll be interesting to see what happens this summer window because I think Palace could get a fair bit of money out of these two I, 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 would they let them both go would that really land them in it or could they take the money and do something with it I think if Newcastle could get an Elise 60 million that sorts that right side of midfield position out or, to be honest I think the way Gordon Barnes and Isaac are playing is already spot on but to just get that extra little extra because really Barnes and Gordon both want to play on the left if we could just get that extra level on that right-hand side, would sort that position out like that. You know, what's Minty doing? But, yeah, the reports are Lloyd Kelly reportedly agreeing to join the toon. Uh, and if, look, if we can get this season finished in a place where we want to be in and have a sign like that done so quickly, would put us in a really good spot going at this summer window. Uh we don't want to be at the end of the summer going, we've got no centre-backs and we haven't signed anyone. Because that's where it comes out of the money. Give it, honestly, give it two or three months. If we've not sorted out that centre-back position, suddenly everyone will be charging whatever they... Will we, will we get a buy in anyone? And they'll be charging whatever the hell they want. So it gets something done like that early. Fr it just frees us. Frees us from that worry that we've done nothing. That's my doorbell. Thank you for watching, guys. As always, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.